The machine, listen to it. The hub of each of these wheels, that's a DT Spline. <sighs> Spline, I think it is. Giant Propel SLR2. Factor O2 Van Decadence Tubular 35. Ooh. Wind space. Hybers. And this is the Merida Reacto 6000. We've got the Fulcrum Racing Racing 800 alloy wheels. Oh, that sounds a bit noisy there. Oh, she's quiet. Oh, something, 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 some, something, something. Is that it? Something to come. Welcome back to the Friday vlog series, which is brought to you by Squarespace. Thank you very much to Squarespace for supporting my channel. And we'll be splitting it into two parts. So part number one, what am I doing with the Merida Reacto 6000, a super affordable aero bike for 4,200 AUD. And we're gonna be testing this bike versus the wind space in this little video. So stick around for that. And part number two of this video, it's a sad day. You can see my kids are walking to school. Yeah? I'm picking you up oh, at the Oval. They no longer want me to walk them fully to school. <laughs> I walk them to the corner and then they take off by themselves. Dad, we don't want you walking us to school anymore, which is a sad day. But part number two is what's going on with my 165 millimeter cranks. I made some content on this last year and I'm getting a lot of questions about it. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you what's going on. So let's get into part number one. So I've got my hands on the Merida Reacto 6000, thanks to my friends at Advanced Traders, who are the Aussie distributor for Merida here in Australia. They've given it to me for a few weeks so we can compare, triple-headed review. Merida Reacto 6000 versus the Giant Advanced One versus the Windspace T1500. So that's gonna be coming in future content, but in this video today, what I thought I would do is, there's gonna be a few little tests that we do comparing these bikes. One will be up Gindia, but this bike's a fair old beast. You're not gonna stick around for it? No. <laughs> My mother-in-law, Cheryl, didn't want to stick around for the bike way in. Let's do it. And, oh, this one feels a bit heavier than the others. Woo! With the same speed play pedals as we've been weighing the other bikes, we had 8.1, I think, wind space, 8.6 for the Giant, Nine kilograms, almost 9.1. Oh, I knew she was heavier. <sighs> oh. So what I thought I'd do in this video, instead of testing up Gindia at the top of this segment, there's another segment, it's a false flat. We're gonna test the Merida versus the wind space. But before we do that, nah, nah, all good, thank you. But before we do the comparison between the Merida and the wind space, let's retest the wind space back up Gindia Drive, the segment behind me here, this sort of three, four percent hill climb at 350 watts and see how the times now compared to what it was when the hyper wheel had some creaking issues. And then what we're gonna do is go home, look at the data and see how the wind space compares to the old wind space and how the Merida compares to the wind space on the false flat section. So let's get into it. So before we test the wind space again up Gindia, a couple of things. This is how I operate. Standing start from this line, segment starts up there. The reason why I'm doing this again, because we did do this against the Giant last week at 350 watts, but they were the new Asioma power pedals. I'm now back on the original Quark power meter when we tested the wind space with Creaky Wheel. So we have the same benchmarking tool. So I'm gonna do two runs. Let's get into it. So the wind space test up Gindia times two complete. I'm now gonna go put the Asioma power pedals on the wind space. We'll go do the false flat. I forgot the wind space has a contaminated front disc. That's why, or one of the reasons why disc brakes give me the shit. Funny story behind these shoes, why I have to use them, and I will share that with you later in the video. Asioma, power pedals. Calibration complete.
So let's quickly look at this segment before we get into the times. And before we do that, I just wanted to thank today's video sponsor being Squarespace. If we actually have a look at my wife's website here, which was built just recently, it's on a Squarespace platform and you can see how clean, simple, yet intuitive it is. And my wife, who's a non-techie, personally loves how easy it is to go into the back end, alter text, layouts, color schemes, etc., without needing any development skills. If you're keen to get a website off the ground, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com backslash camnichols to save 10%. See all the relevant details below in the video description area. So this is a 1.8 kilometer false flat segment called TT Like You Mean It. You may have seen this before when we tested the Cannondale System 6 versus the Super 6, and this is mostly a slight decline working well into the hands of these aero bikes. I will perform a standing start as per usual and attempt to average 400 watts on both bikes using the Asioma power pedals. So let's get back into it. Final test on the Merida Reacto completed. Let's go look at the data. Alrighty, so before we get into the numbers, if you're enjoying this video, could you please throw us a like? Helps the channel out and I would greatly appreciate it. So, first up, the wind space without a creek versus with a creek. And as you can see, the times mostly stay the same. It's interesting to see about a 10 second difference between the times with the Asioma power pedals below versus the Quark power meter, which seems to be indicating that the power meters are running a little differently, which I'll investigate further in future content. You may also note that the average power is five watts higher in one segment with a slower time, which just goes to show, I've said it before and I'll say it again, these tests are not perfect. I was probably riding at a high power output in one section of the hill versus another, and that's affected the overall score. But I still think this gives us something, which brings us to TT like you mean it. And as you can see, the wind space has taken out the Merida convincingly, which I did expect riding that segment. It just felt that way. And let's face it, the Merida Reacto 6000 as an overall package is roughly $1,500 AUD less than the wind space as we speak. So what we're going to do for the triple headed review is I'll be running four segments, one uphill, one false flat decline, one false flat incline, and a descent with all three bikes and then I will take the hyper wheels off the wind space and retest all segments on the Giant and the Merida with what I believe are the best wheels out of the bunch. So let's get into part two of this video. So people have been asking, Ross, are you still enjoying the beanbag? Are you alive? <laughs> oh, you love it, don't you? What a magnificent head. <laughs> My wife's working with no pants on. It's Pants Up Thursday. It's Pants Up Thursday. Okay, bugger off now. So the reason why I've been using these borderline pornographic bike shoes for the testing is because the Asioma pedals require a different cleat system and I am used to the speed plate cleat system and Neil Stanbury has me on some shims and he set me up with this system so I don't want to mess with it. I do have some spare shoes. These, they used to be great, this S-Works. I've gone off the S-Works now. I much prefer these shoes, but I cannot get that off. I have tried everything and the, you can turn the screw, but this thing here turns with it, whatever that thing is. And I've given up, I've taken it to a bike shop and yeah, that's why I'm wearing the old man's borderline pornographic bike shoes, which I actually don't mind. I reckon they're not too bad. <laughs> So, am I still riding the 165 millimeter cranks? The answer is yes I am on the Factor O2 Vam. The reason why I've been riding 172.5 still on the other bikes is because when you buy bikes medium 54 centimeter level off the shelf, they pretty much all come with 172.5s and because I've been on a bike buying spree and... Mm. Sorry, it's totally okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, because I've been on a bike buying spree, it's it's actually more costly to take out or swap over the 172.5 millimeter cranks for 165s. And quite often they can't get their hands on 165s. It's become quite the problem. So for me, I rode on 172.5s for 
10, 11 years, and I'm still okay riding that way, but I guess the question is, what is my preference? Right now, my preference would be, for general riding, for road racing, 165s. Reason being is I feel like I can find myself in a better position. I can get more aerodynamic. I can get down in the drops a lot easier. I feel like there is less muscular fatigue because you inadvertently pedal at a higher cadence after a long ride or after a road race. I've had some people disagree with me in the comment section on that, and maybe it's just my anecdotal experiences, but it certainly feels that way. I do have that little voice in the back of my head that says maybe for a crit race, maybe for a fast bunch ride, riding the 172.5s, you will generate a little bit more power. But whether that's actually the case or not, I'm not so sure. And I'm really yet to find myself in a peak level of form since changing over to the 165s to really be able to put some tangible evidence or numbers behind that from a personal perspective. So that will come in due course. Just please, uh, if you can be patient, could be another six to 12 months. I find myself as a sole trader, very little time to focus on cycling at the moment in terms of training. But that's pretty much it. 